and there is a, a place with lots of microphones and lots of uh, video cameras. We can ask questions and discuss everything, uh, mathematics, meta-mathematics, uh, anything whatsoever. And, uh, and it will be on record, so, so strongly encouraged to do that, and we might be able to do that today. So we could do it today, right after class. You can just walk. So there's room for, I don't know, 10 people or something on, on some uh, designer chairs, which means some, some tall things in which you can spin and you can, you can ask uh, questions there. Yes. Oh, today it's not possible. Next Monday it is possible. Okay. Those, uh, right, right. Okay, I think uh, we should uh, we should start. Uh, so uh, uh, the first thing was uh, an observation of Sabrina last time, which was that uh, that uh, if you take this graph. Then besides the eigenvalue 1, root 2, 1, yes, you also have one negative root 2, 1. Yes. And uh, can you see what property of the graph made this thing work? The fact that the graph was... So for what graphs can you just multiply some things with minus 1? Yes, the screen puts a big shade, so we're going to lift it for the moment. Yes, so for what graphs can you, uh, can you multiply some things with negative 1 and still have an eigenvector? Bipartite graphs, you see, so what we used was really that this graph was sitting like this. Yes, so this was 1, 1, negative root plus minus root 2, yes? And how would this generalize, actually? Instead of bipartite graphs, you can hear from the name. If you have, for instance, not bipartite graphs, but tripartite graphs, yes? You remember that uh, Chuck discovered uh, my tripartite graph in algebraic geometry, and uh, so. Oh, I see, I see. So if you have tripartite graphs, then you can multiply this with some root of unity, right? With a third root of unity, yes. And there is indeed a, a Perron-Frobenius theory adapted exactly for this. So it tells you that the vector is unique, except for this. Except for this, uh, so it's the unique one with maximum absolute value except exactly for this kind of multiplication. Very good, so we settled that. And uh, now uh, also as to the beginning of uh, things, I want to uh, ask you to ask yourselves a question. So we had two fundamental ways to interpret the parameter Q last time. Remember that Q was uh, for permutations Q was counting the number of crossings, the number of inversions, yes, in a permutation. On the other hand, we used it to count linear maps, and Q squared minus 1 was the number of non-zero vectors in the plane. So the question is, what's the question? What would you do when you, when you find a very fundamental thing of this kind? Yes, yes, that's, uh, that should make you a mathematician right away. So if you find two fundamental things, yes, find the same Q behaving the same way, what's the question? Right, exactly, find where are the wires in this <laughs> and where are the... Uh, Where's the field in this, yes? And uh, I haven't give it, given it a lot of thought, but I think that you might find some, uh, some things which go back to Euler. So uh, I'll 
if you work on, on that one. Uh, now, remember that we had the graphiate fine, and I was showing you here the Perron uh, eigenvalue, the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue. So the norm of the graph here, the norm of the Laplacian was 2. Yes, the Laplacian was a sum of neighbors. So if you add the neighbors, this was 2, and you have guessed last time that this was a an arithmetic progression that you see on every leg. It's an arithmetic progression, and it has to start with 0, else uh, it doesn't hold for this point, right? So an arithmetic progression is, uh, is almost by definition the fact that every point is the average of its two neighbors, right? So the sum of the two neighbors is exactly twice the value at that point, right? Um, and uh, the question very fast is to find the spectrum of these graphs. ADE, yes? Uh, let's reintroduce the quantum numbers. So new, so this is a redefinition. Uh, let's take them centered. So let's take uh, one is uh, one, but uh, let's say quantum two is Q to the one half, Q to the negative one half plus Q to the one half. You see the center instead of one plus Q, yes? They just move by a power of Q. Uh, any questions? So Q, quantum three is Q inverse plus one plus Q. Yes, and so on. So Q, uh, so the quantum number K is uh, Q to the K over two minus Q to the minus K over two over Q to the one half minus Q to the negative one half. And uh, we're going to have also the following notation. The quantum number N K at the nth root of unity is the same uh, but with Q equals to uh, exp of pi i over n, so that we have, uh, in that case, uh, quantum n at the nth root of unity is zero. Let's plot them. So uh, what function is this? If you put here root of unity, that's an elementary one. Yes, yes. You know, the way to prepare for this course is to make sure you sleep a considerable number of hours before, yes, so that you are very alert during the course. So it's sine, exactly. So this would be, in that case, uh, quantum k at the nth roots of unity is sine of k, uh, k pi over n divided by sine of pi over n. Yes, and in particular, quantum 2 at the nth root of unity, which we'll work with, is cosine of pi over n. 2 cosine of pi over n. Yes, this is the elementary formula. Uh, yes, they are the two nth roots of unity. Yes, that was uh, uh, asleep. I should have slept more. Thank you. So this is uh, the two nth roots of unity. But uh, now let's let's rather plot it. Yes. So how does it look like uh, if you plot here zero, one, two, three? Yes. Quantum zero is zero. Quantum one is one. Yes, and then the function is sine, right? So quantum n is 0, so this is quantum k. So this is here k, and this is quantum k at the nth root of unity. Yes? And now uh, 
we can add them, but you should uh, you should be careful because quantum two plus quantum three is not quantum five. Yes, and not at all. But uh, however, the multiplication works fine. So let me let's write quantum two times quantum five. This you should take as easy exercises is quantum four plus quantum six. Yes, and more generally, quantum n times quantum k is uh, k minus n plus one plus k minus n plus three plus up to uh, k plus n minus one. Yes, so this way you can multiply numbers. And this should remind you of something if you're in physics. Yes, yes, what are these? Yes, who multiplies just like that? It's exactly a spin, yes. So these are, this is SLN, a SU2, excuse me. So these are the irreducibles of SU2, which we're going to study. So the irreducible sigma J, this is a spin. Your physicist, this should correspond to what number here? The degree is, this is a degree. The degree of the representation is 2j, yes? And this would be 2j plus 1, which is what? The degree is 2j, so you spin j. 2j plus 1 is the dimension, yes? So these are the homogeneous polynomials in the basis. It's E1 to the E1 uh, to the 2j, E1 to the 2j minus 1, E2, up to E2 to the j, 2j. So these are, uh, so the number of such things is 2j plus 1. See, so you count polyno homogeneous polynomials of degree uh, 2j, yes? And uh, uh, let me give you a motivation for the name spin, for the fact that the spin, uh, spin, uh, well, we, we'll do this a bit later, but uh, let's see here, in view of this, what should be the uh, eigenvalue of uh, the, the maximal eigenvalue of the graph An? Yes, yes. Do you see the leg of E8? Yes? So uh, arithmetic progression, and it had eigenvalue 2, yes? That's what arithmetic progressions do. So now I was telling you that uh, since the time of Euler, Euler, Euler found out that a lot of the things he could work out with numbers, he could work out with quantum numbers. Uh, he just didn't call them like that. Q numbers, they're called, because quantum is overused. So uh, now, what do you see on the blackboard that would, that would do the same job? One, it's on the blackboard there. It should be the, do the same job as the arithmetic progression. Yes, yes. The arithmetic progression, here, here. <laughs> Look, four plus six, if you add the neighbors of five, you get quantum two times quantum five, yes? So it means that Quantum zero, quantum one, quantum two. Yes, this is an arithm. This is a progression. With uh, uh, Laplace, yeah, you know the sum of neighbors equal to what? Not two, but. 
almost is not two, but it's knobs is quantum two. <laughs> so this is uh, with delta of uh, v is equal to quantum two times v. Yes. So it's not quite arithmetic, but uh, but almost. Right. So it's exactly this one. You see, the arithmetic progression goes like this. And ours goes uh, goes like this. So here, the sum of any two numbers is quantum two times the fellow in the middle. Yeah. Look at the property here. Yes. So we need something like this, which begins and starts with zero. What, what is it for the graph a n? Fast. So we have the graph AN here. Maybe you should take an example. You see, I think you need an example. And uh, I brought one with me. I mean, initially I thought that, uh, uh, you know, students uh, expect here high standards of entertainment. So I brought a magician hat. And of course, I was thinking to pull a rabbit out of the hat. Yes, uh, that's what people who handle such things do. But uh, this is Harvard, and probably there's a society for the protection of rabbits <laughs> that, would, uh, that would block us in this, uh, in this room. So instead of rabbits, I brought the rabbits in a different form, which is this one. Yes, so uh, can you see on the blackboard what is this? Well, it's a bit bent to to fit. Hmm? It's a Dunkin' diagram D4, yes? A4, sorry. It's a Dunkin' diagram A4, yes? And uh, let's see if uh, somebody knows the connection between the Dunkin' diagram A4 and the rabbits. Nobody? Wow, you haven't study, studied uh, crystallographic structures. Find the rabbits. Maybe I'll ask. I, I did ask this, but uh, uh, when, uh, when Zhang Wei was in Europe, and uh, yes, the Fibonacci numbers. So this is, so you see, you take here the length, and here the number of paths. Yes, we make a table, the number of paths versus the length. Yes, and in length uh, zero from each of these points, the number of paths is one, right? One path of length zero. Uh, from here, uh, w you have one path, but from the middle you have two, right? So this would be one, two, two, one. Uh, three, you get uh, here, you get two, right? Two, three, three, two, and four is uh, three, five, five, three, and so on. And these are exactly the Fibonacci numbers. And they were in, they were motivated allegedly by Fibonacci, uh, just to show that they appear in nature. Yes, they describe the breeding of rabbits. Yes, so the idea is that one rabbit uh, needs one year to reach maturity, after which it produces another rabbit every year. Yes, so more or less that's exactly what happens to the paths. The number of paths, for instance, from here, yes, you can go to the right and to the left, right? And that's, that's what's counted here. Uh, paths of length three, you can go, I don't know, here, back, and once more here. Not so. Uh, so look, the uh, let's take the three paths here from this point. We can describe them like this: one, two, three. Yes. Uh, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Yes. I think that's about it. Yeah. Hmm. 
Oh, path of length two. This should have been, sorry, this should have been length two. Thank you. Yes, because I was careless. So this is zero, one is one, two paths of length two from here, one straight, one back. Yes, and so on, yeah? So uh, what's the asymptotic of this? So asymptotic, you know uh, the asymptotic of the Fibonacci numbers. So these are proportional to one golden ratio, golden ratio one, yes? Sorry about the thing, let me lift it a little bit. Uh, so this is uh, one golden ratio, golden ratio one. And let's lift. Yes. And uh, from n to n plus one, it's times a golden ratio. Yes. Where phi square is, uh, phi is one plus root five over two. And phi square is phi plus one. Yes. That's a recurrence relation of the rabbits, since we are the hat. What are these numbers? Can you recognize them on the blackboard? Maybe. This one, five, five, one on that blackboard. The quantum. One, two, three, four, exactly. So these are the quantum one, two, three, four at the fifth root of unity, yes? Where zero is zero and five at the fifth root of unity is also zero, yes? So we have exactly that arithmetic progression. So it means that in terms of our graph, our graph was A4. Yes, and we used also the zero here and the zero here, and this is, uh, these are our numbers. Yes, and now uh, with your training as physicists, what are the other eigenvectors? Where else have you seen this? Maybe you play the violin. The higher harmonics, exactly, yes? So the next one would be yes. And the one after that should be something like yes. And that should take care also of the of the negative numbers that were observed by Sabrina. So uh so uh, how can you write the higher harmonics if this is quantum, quantum k at the nth root of unity? Who's changing? N is changing, right? So these are quantum k at the 2nth root of unity, yes? And this is quantum k at any point k, yes, uh, at the 3nth root of unity. I mean, it's two times the three three nth root of unity, as you as you said very well, right? So this is not at the fifth root of unity, but at the tenth root of unity. So this is at pi over five. Yes. Very good. So uh, and what is the eigenvalue here? Here it's quantum two. Right? Lower n. Here it would be, of course, the same. Yes, what we changed was just n, right? So this is quantum 2 at the 2nth. With lower 2n, quantum 2 to the 3n, yes? So it means that, uh, and this is so quantum. 2 at the power n little n is going to be uh, 2 cosine 
of pi over 2 uh, over uh, n uh, capital N. Yes, that's a, that's a thing that we have. And if you plot these numbers on a half disk, then this one here would be 2 cosine of pi over 5. So let's see, in the case of 5, we divide the thing in 5. Yes, 2 cosine of pi over 5 would be this value. And this is what? 2 cosine of pi over 10, and so on. Yes, so uh, let's see if uh, uh, it's, uh, no, no, uh, the, it's the other way around. I think that we got here, it was not n, yes, 2n, it should be 2 cosine of n pi over capital N, and here it should be n over 2, Yes, because the n is in the denominator. Yes, so if you want to make it, so this should be n over 3. Hmm? Quantum 2k, yes. Quantum 2k, but uh, yes, yes, actually this, is, this was correct, sorry, and it's true. And this is quantum 2, 2k, so this is quantum 2n quantum 2 little n, and the n certainly appears up. So this is 2 cosine of 2 pi over 5, and this is 3 pi over 5 and 4 pi over 5, yes? So it's exactly these numbers. You can see here that the negative eigenvalue appears as well, right, by symmetry. Thank you, yeah. Well, uh, this is also an you, you're right. So this is this is the eigenvalue here was two times two, with lower n, yes, and this was three times two, with lower n. Yes, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Very good. So we have uh, this way the. Uh, it should be quantum 2, but it should be quantum 2 with n over 2. Yes, I think so. So, quant... Hmm? On the top. Okay, that's fine. We can write. Right, right, right. Okay. 2n, and this is 3n. 3 times 2, so 2 times 3. Yes, so this is 2 times 2, and 2 times 3 over 3, n. Yeah? Very good. So in any case, the, the vector will look exactly like that. Okay, that's a, the that's a main point. The vector will look exactly like that. Uh, the, the, the fact, you see, that's what happens if you uh, see something at the last moment, these high harmonics. I just saw them. I never thought of them before. So, uh, uh, so they give a, a very nice pictorial uh, view of the eigenvectors, yes? And you can see here that the sum of neighbors, the neighbors are now not one apart, but they are two apart, do you see? Because here the unit is the same. Yes, so this makes the, uh, the vectors further apart, which would explain this two times two here, yes? And the n actually could be exactly the same. So this is just, instead of being 0, so this would be not 0, one, quantum 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but this would be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And uh, uh, so th these would just go uh, two times faster, yes? 6, 8, and uh, so, so here it would come like this, and this would be 10. Yes, and that fixes all our problems. Very good. 
Any questions about this? Yes, so we just make the wave go two times uh, faster, yes? And now, uh, let's... Uh, uh, let me give you also a kind of uh, homework with a question. Uh, look what happens to the Dinkin diagram E8 uh, fine, which is up there. We're going to... Do you see the Dinkin diagram E8 uh, fine at the very top, right? Uh, where, so the, the legs are arithmetic progressions. Where's the interesting point? The six, do you see? The middle, the triple point, where you have to have two times six is five plus three plus four, right? Yeah, that's the only point which is not of arithmetic progression type. So how should we get the Dinkin di the, the eigenvalues of the graph E8? Non-affine, why? Yes? The leg should be what? What we just had. Yes, yes. What should you have on this leg? Quantum one, quantum two, three, four, five. Yes? Right? Now, this leg should be proportional to proportional to The question? It was a question. Right, that's a, no, that's a fine one. The non-affine one has one less point. Exactly the, the point with one is missing, yes? And we're going to study exactly the structures which make that, this one exactly like the affine one. Yes? So, here, the leg is an arithmetic progression, so it should be proportional to 0, 1, 2, 3, yes? So it means that what is the value here? Since it's proportional to this, it's all multiplied by 5 over 3, yes? To make it match right here, yes? So this here would be 5 over 3. This one would be 2 times 5 over 3. Yes? So that this one is 3 times 5 over 3, right? And similarly, the one here should be... Um, this one should be proportional to 1, 2. Yes, so this should be 5 over 2, yes, all right? And now, the, uh, what should, where should be the, uh, the eigenvalue, uh, where, where should we check the eigenvalue? Because these make all the eigen, this, this gives eigenvalue 2 at every point, right? The sum of neighbors is equal to two quantum two times that number at every point, right? So imagine these are exactly like representations of the spin group, if you're a physicist. So where's the interesting point now? As you said before, it's five, yes? So what we have to check is that quantum two times quantum five Yes, is equal to the sum of neighbors, right? Which is what? 4 plus 5 over 2 plus 2 times 5 over 3. Yes? Yes? Oh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, we work at some root of unity, so these are actual numbers, yes? So, show that the... Uh, so, now that you know how to multiply, you can check them, right? You should check them numerically, 
and guess. So the number one, uh, guess the at what root of unity we are. Yes, that root of unity is called the. Uh, I mean half of the root of unity, so the number here is called the Coxeter number. The physicists call it the dual Coxeter number. Yes? And uh, two, I guess, so how would you do this? You multiply these things, yes? And you find first numerically for what for what n, so you multiply them as polynomials, and you find for what q does the relation hold, yes? And number two is you apply exactly what we uh, did here with some hesitation before, namely find for what, what are the other eigenvalues. of the graph, yes? So this equation will hold for certain eigenvalues, yes? These are very important in representation theory. These are the exponents of the graph E8. And they appear as uh, dimensions of subspaces. I mean, they appear all over. Uh, however, if you take, uh, uh, we have now uh, uh, somebody, you know, I, I am uh, kind of redoing uh, representation theory in a different way. But William Knowledge, uh, who just came from England, uh, who joined our group, is, uh, is an expert in representation theory. and. Uh, I think he can confirm that he has worked with exponents of E8, but uh, I think my guess is that they were never ever put in this form, which is also true, yes? So uh, this is an entirely new view of the exponents of the graph, yes? So they appear as the eigenvalues. So do the same, so the th three is the same for dn e6 and all the e's, yes? By the way, the other crystallographic graphs appear as uh, some kind of orbifold, so they appear as these graphs modular symmetry, so our study will describe all the Lie structures. Yes? Right. Exactly. No, we have four plus six equals quantum two times that. So it's a it's like an arithmetic it's like an arithmetic progression which grows a little bit slower. Yes? No, it's exactly the same matrix. But it's not. It's not that it's not like the matrix oh, absolutely. The uh, matrix that you... Uh, is <laughs> the answer was provided by you uh, last time. So the matrix was this, 1-1, one, one, yes? This was the adjacency matrix. And what we found here was 1 root 2, 1, yes? And what I'm saying is that these are the quantum one, quantum two. Ah, no, no, the adjacency matrix is still very integer, yes? Oh, to modify the matrix itself. Uh, not quite, I mean, the, I think the matrix, basically the matrix is a graph. So what you're asking is whether we can make other graphs. This could be very interesting. Uh, we can we make other graphs in which, the, instead of having usual edges, we have edges which multiply by a number, yes? 
So in a way, a matrix with non-negative entries is exactly of this form. That's what this uh, peron frobenius uh, theory was created for. You can represent a matrix with non-negative entries as a graph, yes? And on, we, on each edge of the graph, you specify by how much it multiplies. No, no. So these are still matrices of a graph. This is exactly the graph A, A3, you see. But these are still normal edges. I mean, they multiply by one, yes. They just have ones. Right. No, no, it's not. Yeah, I think you're a physicist, right? So you can see, uh, by the way, uh, since this was related to the violin, yes? How exactly does quantum two enter into the picture? Quantum two is a little bit smaller than two, right? So it means that the value here is not equal to is not equal to yes is not equal to the average of the neighbors yes so it means that the value here stands compared to the neighbors it stands out yes so if you have an elastic uh, thing like a string or a column of air, something that stands out from the average of his neighbors is going to be pushed down, back, right? That's exactly the uh, Laplace, the wave equation, yes? And that gives you the oscillation, yeah? This part clear? So this thing, this value here stands out from the sum of its neighbors. So if this was a violin string, you get a force here pulling it back down, right? And the string would enter oscillation. Very good. Any questions? So uh, these numbers are very interesting. You get here an equation in Q, yes? And then you find all the, all the uh, roots of unity which satisfy it. And this should give you the exponents. Yeah? You should find, you should write explicitly the eigenvalues of the graph exactly like the, the, the ones with the rabbit. Yes? What were the, yes. Okay, now, any questions, please? If you have any questions, uh, you should ask them. You should not leave. Uh, so this is the, uh, the eigenvalue theory of the graphs AD, and the moral here is that uh, the moral here is the following, that people have uh, people have found the graphs AD in order to we'll see in order to find the basis of uh, crystallographic uh, lattice. Yes, so uh, they encode uh, in crystallography an edge, so the vertices are vectors, and an edge encodes an angle of 120 degrees, and no edge encodes 90 degrees. Yes, so they encode crystallography, but actually, if we look at the graphs themselves, then the graphs have a life of their own. It will turn out that they are that they are representations of an object, quantum subgroups, which we'll do uh, next time. We'll do the example of the graph D4 and uh, from scratch. So, in fact, it turns out that all the information in those, uh, in the crystallographic uh, uh, structures, which are used to put together copies of rotations, all that information uh, is encoded into the graph itself, 
its eigenvalues, multiplication, and so on. And that's what, that's what we're going to do. Now, let me ask you an, a last question about the eigenvalues. Is a part about the homework, so maybe, uh, James, you can record the homework. We'll have it uh, sent. So is the, the, uh, the question there clear? You have to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the graphs A, D, E, yes? The, uh, on the legs, you have exactly this equation because they need to be progressions, well, in this generalized sense, yes, we start from zero. So they need to be proportional to z one, two, three, yes? Here and one, two there, quantum one, two, three, yes? So this gives one equation at the triple point. And this equation must obviously hold only for some roots of unity. Yes, because a graph has eight vertices, so it should have eight eigenvalues and eight eigenvectors. Yes. These eigenvectors are among the eigen these eigenvalues are among the eigenvalues of the graph AN. That's a fundamental property. So they are among these cosine, th these ones, at the same root of unity. So if you work at the same root of unity, the eigenvalues of that would be eight among the many of the graph AN, yes? The role of the eigenvector, as you can see here, the eigenvector is counting, for instance, paths. So it's the asymptotic number of paths on the graph, yes? Maybe you know what's, what's the property of that from linear algebra. I have asked for linear algebra for this course. Maybe some of you took it uh, very literally and uh, studied even some numerical linear algebra. So what's the numerical part of linear algebra which gives you the asymptotic of the number of paths? The largest eigenvalue, yes. So it's exactly the Peron Frobenius theorem gives you the largest eigenvalue, yes. So it means that if you take a positive vector, it would, uh, it would have a component on the largest eigenvalue, yes. So no matter from wh where you start, if you start with a vector 0, 1, 0, 0, yes, that has a component in the largest. Uh, in the direction of the largest eigenvalue. And when you apply the matrix many times, which is what paths are about, then that eigenvalue is going to dominate. Yes, so that explains the number of paths and the rabbits. And, uh, and also the fact that asymptotically, that, uh, that eigenvalue is going to take over. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, there was a question before, I think, uh, uh, yes, Sruthi asked it about uh, what exactly are we doing here, which is uh, uh, what we're doing is that cutting the space into pieces gives us physical laws, yes? Then we have to fill these pieces, which corresponds mathematically the first step corresponds to uh, finding, for instance, a structure like a group, yes? But a structure, or for instance, a structure of a group, think about uh, 150 years ago, would have been extremely boring to present to students if you had no example of groups. Yes, so you should present the structure at the same time as giving examples, yes? So this is what we are doing here. We are starting to present the examples of mechanics of, uh, of uh, symmetry. And this has a very nice physical interpretation. The, uh, the qua quantum field theory requires certain properties if you cut the space into pieces, yes? And these are the mathematical laws. This is a mathematical structure. 
but then it requires you to fill, to find examples of this structure. Now, that's much harder than the first part. Yes? Find the examples, and these examples are physically interpreted as the inner symmetry of matter. So what we're doing is we find the matter that fits our models. Uh, right, right, but eventually, so for that, we'll have to develop the, uh, we'll have to develop the, the, uh, the higher dimensional theory, and uh, I may have, uh, now, I'll show you some tripartite and uh, more graphs, which we'll study, by the way, since the eigenvalue is, was here quantum 2, yes? And we worked kind of physically in two dimensions. So if you go to three tripartite graphs, uh, what kind of eigenvalues are you expected to find? Just think of this quantum two. It was on the blackboard. It was two cosine of pi over n. So two cosine of pi over n, yes? Where's the two other than the two in front? Just think elementarily, think high, high school. Two cosine of something. That is q plus q inverse, so it's a sum of two exponentials, yes? So the graphs that I'm going to show you now should be the sum, the eigenvalues should be somebody else maybe. Yes? The sum of three exponentials, which they actually are. So these are not, uh, not it. That's an example of quantum symmetry we're aiming at. We're going to do next time something like, like this one. Yes, for the graph D4. So we'll show that a very simple graph like D4 has uh, has the usual symmetries. What are the, the symmetries of the graph D4? That's a letter Y. How many classical symmetries? Fast. Six, you just permute the legs, right? But we'll find also two of them which lie on the side. Yes, so it will have altogether eight general symmetries. And we'll write, uh, actually, a lot of math in terms of that. Uh, let me see if I find now the, the, uh, the higher Dunkin diagrams. Yes, which are, I think that they should be, uh, they should be, let me open them again. So this is, these are the higher ones. which we'll do in this course. Do you see? Uh, well, a golden rule of conferences is that you should never turn the light down because uh, a lot of people would fall asleep and they will never be woken up again. Uh, but this is the end of class, so we can do it. Um, so uh, do you see there the Dinkin diagrams ADE, right? And you see that they're printed bold on this. And the, then you can see the, the higher Dunkin diagrams. I had found these quantum subgroups, and then a friend, I was in Marseille, and my friend Robert Cocoro told me that the physicists were looking for such things, and they had a bottle of champagne for the classification. So uh, of the ones of SU3, do you see the Dinkin diagrams AN over SU3? They're triangles, right? Yes? And the eigenvalues of that, of those, will be, is, uh, I think, uh, yes, as Angwe guessed, they would be sums of three exponentials. Yes? And, uh, and look, there are seven exceptionals. 
And uh, very strangely, if you work one dimension higher, there are only six exceptionals. So there are very few exceptionals. So these are the graphs of type ADE. And uh, I may have uh, now also a, a spectro uh, thing. And then uh, we end the class, yes, which is right now. This is a spectrum uh, plotted in the center of the exceptional graphs. Can you see this? the spectrum is with red points? With red points, you have the spectrum of the graph AN. Yes? And you can see that the graph of an exceptional, which is, uh, ooh, let's see if the, ah. yes, the graph of an exceptional, oh, if everything else fails, or rather, you can also always go to the basics. So the graph of this exceptional, you see there are these points in black, while the graph of the corresponding AN are all the po red points. Yes? So these would play the role of exponents in the higher theory. No, the bigger dots are the eigenvalues of, these gra of this graph. The, the red graphs, oh yes, some of them are big, exactly. They're, they're twice. So it's an eigenvalue taken twice. Thank you very much, yes. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm not sure I should write an email and ask uh, the French who, so they knew the spectrum, but I'm not sure whether they knew that there are sums of three exponentials. Yes, the pictures were considered quite quite mysterious, and certainly for the higher ones, they 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 didn't know. So uh, you have similar ones for the graph A4, yes, and so. On. No red, you see there are a lot of red points here. Those are the eigenvalues of the graph A n. And the main property, and this is a property uh, which they required in their guess of these graphs, they had one which fit the spectrum, but the spectrum condition which they required was uh, the spectrum of such, such a graph. Yes, the eigenvalues, sorry. Ooh, that the eigenvalues be, be among the eigenvalues of the graph AN. So, the black, right, the black ones are the, uh, are the actual eigenvalues of this graph, and the red are the an. Now here, there, there are pairs of things. You, it's a bit harder to see the arrows. Yes, so, so why don't we continue the discussion next time? So in any case, that thing would, uh, would show you a lot more structure than we need. So let's, uh, let's stop here. Uh, next time, I'm going to do from scratch the, uh, the whole, quant the whole uh, quantum symmetry structure of the, very, of the very small graph D4. Yes, classical quantum and so on.